recognize his voice. The voice of the Word of God. Jesus is the Word made flesh. The Logos. Jesus represents for us all that God wants to tell us. So his voice directs us to the Lord. God doesn't speak many words. Not like us. God speaks one word. And his word took flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. The word of God that we proclaim at Mass is the same word that took flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. The same word of the Gospel is Jesus himself. There are not many words, many opinions, that one can choose and pick a few and then make up your own words. But we live in a world of words and ourselves have many words, many opinions, and sometimes the sheep, us, us we get lost in the ocean of voices out there claiming to be the truth and the light. The children that today are about to receive the sacrament are indeed uh, following the one voice of God, the one word of God, whom they will receive in Holy Communion. The word will become flesh again, and they will receive it in the sacrament of the Eucharist that we receive it every Sunday. Something that we get so used to in our life. We should always receive communion as if it was our first time. Never forget that first day, the first time that you went to the altar to receive the Word made flesh. That's what Jesus calls us to Himself, the Word made flesh. And for as we uh, come together, I'd like to uh, thank Deacon Tad Lenz, who comes from Omaha, to be with us today. His granddaughter, Elena, will be receiving the sacrament of the Eucharist. And there is a special gesture that, as you told me, Deacon, uh, you have done the sacrament for all your grandchildren, correct? And he came all the way here to continue that tradition. But it's an important tradition that you as parents also carry that and pass on the faith and make sure that they are fed with the Word of God. Parents have the first and foremost responsibility of transmitting the faith to their children. And making sure that the voice of Jesus is transmitted to the next generation. So what you're doing, Deacon, is what all of us are called to do. Which is to make sure that our children receive the Word of God. In sacrament and in word. Huh? Because the Word of God is not just words. So the Scriptura doesn't work for us. I know that some of you might not, might not be Catholic when you hear that. They're like, that means the Word alone, as Martin Luther said, you know, only the Word of God is necessary for salvation. It cannot work because the voice of Jesus, the Word made flesh, is not an idea that remains in the realm of ideas. It needs to be in flesh, concrete reality, like the Incarnation. The Word made flesh, the Incarnation, the presence of Jesus, needs to be touched. God doesn't only wish to be with us, but He is with us in the Eucharist. So, you cannot just listen to voices and words and speak we're going to follow eventually. But it has to be concretely in the presence of these children. And the responsibility of parents is to transmit that faith. Transmit the voice. To understand the voice of Jesus. He walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. How are we in a world full of voices and noises, are going to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd if we're not used to listening to voices anymore. People don't talk. People text. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> you know? Conversations people may not have. People are sitting in the same dining table 
and then texting each other. The kids are in their bedroom texting their, their parents what's for dinner. You know, because they cannot come out of the room and just ask. People don't have conversations and say, you know, this is going on in my life. We're turning into a passive aggressive culture. We don't speak, we don't listen. We just shout in all capitals. You know, and that way we can state our opinion. It's passive aggressiveness. I mean, I don't say it's a means of communication. Texting is as good as the telegram. Which I don't see it that way. But it's basically what it is. It's just words. They don't transmit the person, the other person, like a voice does. The voice transmits passion, transmits faith, transmits fear, transmits uh, emotions and feelings and thoughts. The voice of the shepherd does the same thing. Jesus transmits and that voice needs and deserves to be heard. That voice is Jesus himself, the Word of God. It requires for us to respond to it. It requires an answer. So the Gospel is not something that we can just think about, but it's something that deserves to be heard, deserves to be responded to. That is what the Word of God is, the living Word that is Jesus Christ. It has to be heard, it has to be responded, it has to cause something. See, that, that Word of God is the one that like a creation, the voice of God, that said, God said, let there be light, and there was light. So the Word of God is effective. God says, and this happens. So when the voice of Jesus is heard, it causes an effect. That's why the voice of Jesus needs to be heard. It cannot just be read, it needs to be heard. Peter heard the word of Jesus. The Acts of the Apostle recounts how Peter converted people to the faith. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, raised his voice. See, there's the voice again. Raised his voice and proclaimed. Peter didn't just say things, I think, I think perhaps, maybe, this Lord that you crucified is Jesus, the Lord of God. No, Peter proclaimed that he, he spoke of the voice that he himself heard and passed on that voice himself to another. 3,000 were converted that day by listening to the word of Peter. I don't think Peter can do the same thing by sending a massive text message. <coughs> Pope Francis said recently, God does not have Facebook. So he cannot talk to it. You know? Those little chain letters that people send on Facebook, I put them on that. You know? You get a, 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 a message that says, I'm sending you this because you need to pray this, this, and that, and send it to 12 people, otherwise something bad will happen to you. I mean, how much you love me, that if I don't stop everything and do this, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that because the voice of God, the voice of Jesus needs to be concrete, needs to be real. Someone said, Father, is there going to be a day that people will not need to go to church, and basically they're going to log into it? No. It cannot happen for two reasons. One is because the word read is not enough or heard on TV. It needs to be a real presence, a real voice. That's how the word is proclaimed and that's how it's transmitted. You can try to have people listen, but you're not going to engage them. So what Peter is doing is precisely that. Now, families. You have the responsibility of transmitting the faith to these children. That's a promise you made when you brought them for baptism. You promised to raise them up in the practice of the faith. And I want to thank the parents, and in many cases the grandparents who brought their children for, for Holy Communion today. So I want to ask the parents 
the grandparents and those who raised these children to please stand for a moment just to be recognized. Thank you. You're keeping your promise. You promised to bring them up in the practice of the faith, and you're bringing them up in the practice of the faith. It is hard, it is tough, but it is the promise you made when you brought them for baptism. Now the promise continues to confirmation, and one day these children will continue to live and listen to the voice of Jesus and know who the shepherd is. We need to recognize also those people who heard the voice of Jesus and themselves cannot stay quiet like Peter and need to pass on the faith to others. And I have great admiration for the teachers, not only of these children, but for all the teachers that teach catechism everywhere. Why do these people take their time of their busy schedule like everyone else and volunteer to teach. They do it because they heard the voice of the shepherd and they want to repeat his word. That's all, that's it. There is no other reason. It's because they love the shepherd so much, they know that Jesus is the gate and they want to continue that. I want to ask the teachers to please stand to be recognized precisely because you heard the voice and you're going to lead us, others, to hear the same voice. So I'm going to ask the teachers of Catechism to please stand, all those who are here present. I know who you are. <laughs> Thank you. Now families. You are the, the first catechist, the main catechist, the main evangelizer. Every father, every mother is like a, like, a, like a pastor in their home. You have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of duties, busy schedules, comings and goings, a lot of things in your life, and you still find time to weave the Word of God into the life of your children. That's to be admired. Some people say, Father, how can we be better Catholics? What do we need to do to be better Catholics? I think sometimes we make it too complicated. We think that we have, we have special formulas, attend many classes and learn a lot, which is good. But I understand many of you cannot take courses and take off from work for months to take a, co a course on scripture or catechesis or theology. <coughs> there are very simple ways in which you can continue to achieve. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> You're jumping ahead of me. There are many ways in which you can achieve this. There's one I'm going to offer to you as a, as, a, as a challenge for this week only. If you want to keep doing it the rest of your lives, you can. It's a very simple thing. Take that device, the mobile device. Round up your family, all of them. And then go to St. Google. <laughs> because you always ask them and they always respond. And put the Gospel of the Day, Catholic. This is that. And it's going to give you the readings of the day. They're also in the bulletin. You put them there in case you haven't noticed. It takes three to five minutes to read the Gospel of the Day. Now, I want you to take the Gospel of the Day and read it in your home aloud. Not privately. We do a lot of things privately, all the texting and everything else, nobody knows what's going on except you. But the voice of God cannot be just remain like that in a, in a private chamber of your mind as you read it. It needs to be proclaimed aloud. Just do that. Read it aloud, even if you are by yourself. Read it aloud. Like we do at Mass. In Mass we don't tell you, okay everybody open to page so and so and let me know when you finish reading. 
No, it needs to be proclaimed. That's what was so important for these kids to read, to read the readings today. Because it needs, the voice of Jesus needs to be heard. The voice of Jesus needs to be heard. And we don't listen to the voice of Jesus because we don't know how it sounds like. Movies, Christian movies are good. I'm not going to say that. It's bad. It's not bad. It's good that you run up your family and watch a Christian movie. That's good. But movies, or like anything else, are second-hand accounts of what Jesus said. The second-hand account. We need to listen to the very words of Jesus, exactly what Jesus said. As he said it. It comes in many languages and whatever language you want is there. It's free. And you just need to read it aloud. Don't add your own sermon to it. Father does that on Sunday. Don't use it as a weapon to tell your family, see I told you I'm right and you're wrong. It's not a tool for apologetics. That's not the voice of Jesus. The voice of Jesus needs to be heard for its own sake. So that your family becomes familiar with the words of Jesus. So when Jesus says, Amen, Amen, I say to you. You know what he's talking about. It takes time. Little by little, this word of God, if you just read the gospel of the day, that's it. Three minutes, five minutes. Just read it and close it and that's it. The word is going to do its work. It's going to go into the consciousness into the soul of all present, slowly, as a drop of water on a stone, and it's going to slowly be hammered down until we get it. But it needs to be heard aloud. That's my advice for you. Do that, and I can reassure you that the Word of God, Jesus Himself, will permeate in the life of your family. So that these children who today receive the Word made flesh in their tongue, will continue to spread the word to all their families and all their families and so forth distribute the graces that come from the Lord Himself. We put the children, consecrate them to the Virgin Mary today during the month of May. The other man is going to crown the Virgin Mary. But we come and we put ourselves in the faithfulness of the Mother of God, asking for her intercession to protect the children and bring them always to the fold. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.